Number 54 is a system of equations. There's two equations and two unknowns, x and y. When you have an equation with two unknowns, you have to have two equations in order to solve it. And we've studied um, solving these graphically. We've solved these by substitution. And we've solved these by elimination. Graphically is challenging for many people. So if one of the two equations is um, has a single letter all alone, like this second equation, y represents five or is the same thing as 5x minus 7, then you can substitute the 5x minus 7 in for y in the other equation and solve um, for x. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to have the 3x plus the 4y, but for y I'm going to substitute in 5x minus 7. And then that first sentence says that it equals 18. And now I just have to do the algebra. So 4 times 5 is 20x. And 4 times a minus 7 is a minus 28. Let's not forget our 3x over here equals this 18. And then let's add 28 to both sides. And on the right, let's see, we'll have uh, 46. And on the left, the 3x um, and the 20x, I probably should have done that first, combined to be 23x. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 23, and I find one of the two answers in this problem. I find the value for x. x is equal to 2. Then I go back to the original two equations, and I put in um, for x in one of the two equations, I put in the answer of 2. And it's easiest to put it in the second equation because it's rearranged for y. That second equation reads, y would be found by taking 5 times whatever x is, and x is 2, and then subtracting 7. So 10 minus 7 is 3. So the solution to this system is x is 2, y is 3, and we typically write that as an ordered pair. And I really should check it in both equations. I'm going to do it for this one. So the first equation is 3x plus 4y equals 18, and I believe that x should be a 2, and that y right here should be a 3. And if I'm correct, then this uh, 6 plus 12 should equal 18, and sure enough it does. I really should check it in the second equation too, even though I used it to solve for y. That equation is y equals 5x minus 7. So my value for y turned out to be 3, and my value for x turned out to be 2. And on the right-hand side, I want to know if 10 minus 7 is equal to 3, and sure enough it is. I love solving systems of equations by the elimination method. When I happen to notice that the coefficients in front of a variable like this 10 and this minus 5 could be eliminated by multiplying the second equation by a 2 to make the number in front of y be a negative 10y, I really like it. Before I, s I do that or think through that, I'm going to write this problem over again and I'm going to write it so that the x's line up and the y's really line up. So you can see a little bit more clearly the fact that I'd love that number right there to become a negative 10 so that when I added these two equations together the 10y and the minus 10y would disappear. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I should multiply this equation right here by the number 2 um, because that will make the y term become a negative 10y. But the x then here, when I multiply it by 2, that will become a 2x. And then I will have my minus the 10y. And a minus 9 times 2 is a minus 18. I'm going to uh, copy this equation down so that they're right side by side. And that would be a negative 2x plus 10y 
equals 18. How weird is that? I had been trying to get the y terms alone, I'm sorry, to be opposite one another so that when I add them they disappear, but it happens that I got the x terms to disappear too because 2x minus 2x is nothing because I'm now adding these two statements together and I get a statement that reads 0 equals 0. Um, that problem has many solutions. Um, if I had gotten a statement at the end where I lost all the variables but I didn't have a 0 on the right hand side, I had some number over here like a 7, when you get a statement like that that is not true, that one has no solutions whatsoever. So when you solve a system of equations, they either intersect, if you were to graph them, and they have one solution, they might be the same two lines and so they lie on one another and they have many solutions or the two lines might be parallel to one another they never intersect and and so they have no solution because they have no chance of of touching one another or having the same two ordered pairs that or the same ordered pair that would work in each in this problem um, the first thing that I might notice is that I could make the x terms become a 10x and a negative 10x by multiplying the second equation by a negative 2. Again, 5, 5 here times that negative 2 would be a negative 10x. 3 times a negative 2 would be a minus 6y. And 15 times a negative 2 would be a negative 30. And then I'm going to copy equation 1 down, the 10x, the 2y, and the 14. And I'm going to add these two equations um, because I want to eliminate the x's. So a negative 10x and a positive 10x is 0. But the y terms, the negative 6y and the 2y add to be a minus 4y. And the negative 30 and the 14 add to be a negative 16. And now I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 4 to solve for y. And I find out that y is equal to a positive 4. I need to take that answer for y and plug it into one of the two original equations. I think I'm going to go with the first equation because I like a 10. I like dividing by 10. I'm going to be solving for x. And so 2 times y, but y is 4 equals 14 and then I've just got to do my arithmetic over here and remember before you divide by 10 you have to get rid of this 8 and so I have 10x equals 6 and then now I'm going to divide both sides by 10 and don't you know don't be bothered by fractions for answers this is going to reduce to 3 fifths my solution to this system is x is 3 fifths y is 4, and I really should check that in the original equation, but I'm not going to take the time at this point.